putting in work. Putting in work. Yeah. Putting in work. Thank God for the favor when the money come yeah. Half for the time, tax fees, and sufficient funds What I gotta do to get it here I'm on a song, what I gotta do to get it Welcome to the Modest Sports Show, home of your college athlete Today I got two, two very special guests We got a repeat offender, Coach <laughs> Keanu Stanley uh, Fulton Dale High School Athletic Director, Head Football Coach And then we have a new guest, Coach Ken, um, Kendrick Henderson Fulton Dale defensive coordinator. So, uh, you know, today, today, this episode is going to be very just, you know, this, for me, this is very refreshing because, you know, I ain't got to put too much into this. I'm just talking ball with my guys. So um, let's just ha- let's hop right into it. All right. So we're going to start this show off with rapid fire questions. All right. How's <laughs> it going to work? Each person. We'll go one at a time. I'm going to ask you three questions. You got 20 seconds to answer each question. After those 20 seconds, I'm going to say next question. I'm going to start reading the next question. You got to stop. You got to answer the next question. All right. All right. Let me get my timer ready. Then we're going to roll. Who's going to go first? I got you. You got me. All right. Cool. 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 All right. First question, what do we think about Ohio State heading into the summer segment? Um, Ohio State has made some very, very powerful moves uh, with the addition of Coach Locke from Oregon. Um, They just made themselves super, super relevant. I think with the recruiting power of Coach Locke, Oregon really now can get into the South and get those players that they need. Should you be able to pull a move like Caden Proctor? Yes. Okay, that's it. Okay. Next question. (laughs) Next question. What did you think about Alabama's first game in 17 years without saving? Um, I actually have not watched the spring game. I said I was going to go back and watch it. Um, I, it's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna have my pen and paper out. All right, cool, cool. I don't know where Ken went, um, but I tell you what I'll do. I'll pull in. I'll I'll plug in place of Ken until he until he uh, rejoins. I guess he's having some technical difficulties. All right. What do we think about Ohio State heading into the summer segment? I feel like Ohio State is definitely going to be a contender. I like the moves that they made in the offseason, like you said, uh, adding coach. Um, I also adding coach Chip Kelly at OC. So I think that's going to be a, that's a power move. I feel like he is going to definitely bring that offense up and really get it going. Uh, next question. Should you be able to pull a move like Caden Proctor? I think not at all. I do not like it. I don't agree with it. I feel like there should be some sense of loyalty. I get the sentiment. Let me back in back to it. I get the sentiment, right, that coaches do it, coaches do it. That's cool. But I do feel like it happens to a fault in college football, so I don't like it. Next question. What did you think about Alabama's first game in 17 years without saving? In my opinion, I feel like Alabama, okay, I got them losing three or four games this year. Not going to lie. Three or four games. Uh, I, I I understand that the board definitely got some tools to work with that he probably didn't have at Washington, but I still feel like he don't have. I, I just think that I think that the, their schedule is too tough this year. All right, Kim, it's on you. All right, first question, twenty seconds. What do we think about Ohio State heading into the summer segment? Uh, money talks. Okay, cool. I like it. All right, should you be able to pull a move like Caden Proctor? Should be, because uh, like we just talked about, a lot of kids chasing that that very thing. If you dangle it in front of them, you can pull it off. And then I think too, with uh, like Hanley said, getting Coach Lock was a big piece, you know, to okay. be able to attest that. Okay. Next question: What did you think about Alabama's first game in 17 years without saving? Uh, common. I know everybody. <laughs> I know everybody. Wow, but you know, you can't you can't have too many high expectations. No, we had to wait on reality, so that's where I'm at. But I do got them losing potentially two games. Two? Okay, okay. Two. 
Two Who are your two? Uh, man. I am hate to say it. Maybe Tennessee. And... Texas. Uh, maybe Texas. Yeah, I'll give them Texas. Tennessee and Texas. Uh, I don't like that. I don't like Tennessee. <laughs> hey, me, me neither. But I just feel like if it's if it's a game that you know what I'm saying, potentially gonna get up to. You know, looking at last year, they got a new QB coming too. That's that's nice. You talking about the Nico kid? Yeah, yeah, pretty smooth. So okay, it's gonna be interesting to see. All right, what you think about that, Coach Hannah? Um. Tennessee with the Temple offense. I'm interested to see how Kane Walmack can defend that Temple offense. What is his adjustments going to be? How is he going to match that energy? How he's going to play those wide splits and still be able to stop the run game um, and not be able to sell it like he want to? Um, and then Texas, even though Texas lost Bo Davis, they still have one of the prominent D-lines in the SEC. And we know the game is won in the trenches. I will say this. It's hard to say Bama going to lose two or three games. And I'm going to call this kid out. I saw Keenan. And when I tell you he looks like the Keenan that was in the 10th grade at Ramsey High School that terrorized the state of Alabama, <laughs> he's slimmer. He he done lost all the unnecessary fat. He's more explosive out his hips than I've ever seen him. If that's if that's the Keenan you finna get, Keenan probably, mark my word, will be a top ten pick in the NFL draft this year. Okay, okay, that's him. Okay, I'll expect for Line, it. linebacker room loving that. Okay, okay. I, I mean, for interior DL, you know, I we got to see it. I got to see that. That's a that's high regard. I got to see that. With having the I coach against the kid, and and I, I've 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 seen it in person. Okay. I've seen it live. I've had to coach against the kid and practice like that every day. When Keenan is at his best, it is smoke in the city. Okay, you know I, I actually to add to that uh, comment. I actually like what I seen uh, during their spring game this year. They, they did. I feel like they did a good job running the multiple defense. I believe they, um, there were some holes. You know what I'm saying in the secondary, especially like when they did, uh, like play action stuff and boot stuff uh, coming back across the field. But aside from that, I like it was a cat. Um, he was, a, I guess, you was, he was a box safety hybrid backer number eighteen. Uh, I liked him. I liked the way he was kind of playing his role. So I, I'm, and then you know you got Malachi, of course. So I think his seniority is gonna definitely add some depth on their back end. But um, okay. Now let me tell y'all why I say Alabama loses three or four games. <clears throat> and I feel like each one of these games that I say they're sleepers. They're sleepers. All right. So I got Georgia. They, I think um, yeah, Georgia. Georgia is kind of like one of them games where I feel like Georgia's is gonna outdog them. Just being honest, and they and Alabama has a pretty tough schedule too. So depending on how uh, Alabama comes off of that Wisconsin game, that's on the road. So depending on how they coming off that game, if they have momentum going into the Georgia game, I feel like that could really affect them. So Georgia, um, and these are not all definitive losses either. These are just possible losses. I say South Carolina. South Carolina, much like Missouri, which is another team I'm going to say. Right. I feel like they've been building over these past couple of years. Now I know it might be outlandish, but if we look at how Missouri played Georgia last year on the road and they beat Ohio State in the bowl game, I don't feel like it's too far fetched. I don't feel like it's too far fetched. I feel like Missouri got one of the most powerful offenses in the nation, if I'm being honest, with the Cat Luther Burden, the uh Theo Weiss Jr., uh Mookie. Like that, that quarterback, he coming back. They, they're revamping on their offensive line. I feel like Missouri is definitely a team to watch out for this season. I'm just saying. This is my observation. I don't see Tennessee. Um, and I'll say Oklahoma, too. Uh, the only reason I'll say Oklahoma is because 
I feel like they got a lot of energy coming to join the SEC. So I feel like them much like Texas should be teams that you can't you and I think Alabama got Oklahoma on the road, if I'm not mistaken. So those are those are my um that's just my input in regard to Alabama's schedule. Now, I do want to ask you all this. Uh uh Coach Ken, you go first. Who are your favorites as of today to come out of each power four conference? And what are or uh, what power four school would be a disappointment heading into the next season? Power four. Uh, well, power four, because we're getting ready to pack. Yeah, we're getting ready. To, yeah. So oh uh, man. Um SEC, maybe Georgia. Um Oregon, of course, I don't think anybody's going to be able to match what Atlanta's going to do on that coast. Um, oh, man. I'm going to give a surprise and throw Clemson in there. Ooh. I, think Dabo, I think Dabo got something brewing, and uh, the way it falls, it may go his way. And uh, ironically, Florida State, I think Florida State got a chip on their shoulder. So, you know, those would be, those would be my four, Georgia, Oregon, um, Florida State and Clemson. Well, give me give me another one. Give me um, uh, give me the Big Twelve. Big Twelve. <laughs> it, it's hard. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna say Dion, but uh, no, nah, nah, not at all. Uh, <laughs> I call for you when I go. Okay. Let me see. I got I got a, a couple sleepers when I go. Yeah, get name one of your sleepers. Let me see what I think. All right, I'm a. I got Utah. I like Utah. Utah tough man. Hey, greedy. They they tough, and then I got Arizona State. Kenny Dillingham, I feel like if he get the right guys with what he done, and I get it. I think last season what they went four and uh, or three and three and nine, four and eight, something like that. But I'm telling you, the way they the way I seen them play a few of them games, I'm like, if he get the right guys in his system, I feel like he can make magic. Uh, I I had to see that. And then when they do when they do well, I always remember that core said it first. All right. So what we got, Coach Ham? Oh, wait, 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 wait. My bad. Before I get to Coach Ham. Ken, what who are your who are your uh disappointments? Disappointments. Yeah. Probably gonna be Colorado. Um <laughs> I go Colorado, USC. Uh and I'm gonna say Auburn. So re- reason being for Colorado, yeah, reason being for Colorado, man, I, I love Dion as far as what he's doing. Um, a few key additions, you know, that he made. But, of course, y'all know like I know, man, all that talking only gets you so far. You know, and I think us as a people, you know, of course, we're always going to rep it and support it, but he ain't quite there yet. I always try to look at new coaches coming into a new thing by third year. You know, like applaud him for what he did, you know, first year. You know, but – uh crawling into that second year, man. Also, you know, it may shake up a little bit with a few guys, a few teams leaving. But, yeah, you know, yeah, I don't think he's going to meet the the expectations of what everybody got, you know, set for him. So I think that'll be the biggest disappointment, you know, with everything that's moving and transitioning. He's going to piss some of them off. going to piss some of them off with that one. And, and look, and, and look, last one, I'm going to say Ohio State. Again, yeah. money talks, but, you know, you got to be able to, you know, create something. Uh, right. For all those guys to get along, you know, if, if if that's the one entity that you got to put everybody together, you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's gonna get tough. You know what I'm saying? So if they don't make it, hey, you know, so so be it. So yeah, I like that. I like Ohio State. I could definitely see it because man, the Big Ten loaded this season. So yeah, I could I could definitely see that not taking place. Coach Hanley, what we got? Top four. Power uh, top or excuse me, top four schools out of each power four conference, and then uh, the biggest disappointments in each one of those conferences as well. Um, I'm rocking with I'm rocking with uh, Florida State. Um, out of the SEC, I'm going Texas. Oh, I like that. Okay. Um. Out of the big, oh man, I'm gonna say UCLA. 
Oof. Okay. okay. I'm gonna say you. I'm gonna say UCLA. All right. Um, and I'll then I'm, I'm also gonna rock with Penn State. Man, I can't lie to you, Coach Hens. What are we talking about, man? Penn State. Come on, dog. I got. I really got to see that I'm, one. I'm, I, and I'm gonna tell you why I say Penn State. Um, okay. Penn State is gonna run the ball. Um, their quarterback is going to be a game manager. Um, they're going to have an excellent tight end. They're going to have a perimeter guy that can run. Yeah. And um, if I'm not mistaken, they possibly have two DBs that could be first round guys. Yeah, you talking about the Kalen King kid, and then yeah. uh, who else? Who the second guy? Um, I can't think of the young man's name, but. Yeah. They they you know, you got if you can take care of the perimeter in the pass game, your quarterback is a game manager. You got a tight end, which is a matchup nightmare. Yeah. And you can run the football. And this is coming from a guy that used to be a true spread guy. Yeah. That now I'm into the run game. And even in having a dynamic quarterback that can run the ball. Um I still teach my quarterback how to manage a game. Like, yeah. I'll give you the keys to the Cadillac and say, go win it. But also, I'm going to teach you how not to lose it. You, okay. you feel what I'm saying? And I feel like the the play calling um, will get them some wins and some games that people ain't going to expect them to win. Um, biggest disappointments. Um I'm not going to say Colorado um, because for me, I've been looking at Sherman's commitment to the (laughs) run game. Okay. I've been looking at it. And they are a lot more physical in the run game. Um, With the addition of Warren Sapp coaching that D-line. So now you get somebody – that that creates great energy and is going to build depth on that D line. So I'm saying Colorado gets in the twelve, but Ooh. I don't think they win their conference. That's big. I say they, I yeah. say they, win, they they get in the twelve, but they don't win their conference. Okay. Um, and then um, disappointment wise, um, I think the biggest disappointment in the SEC. Um, I grew up a fan of this team. There's actually two disappointments in the SEC this year. Okay. It's going to be Arkansas and Auburn. Okay. Arkansas and Auburn. I feel like Auburn has a lot. They have enough to be relevant. Um, But do they have the right people to get it out of those young men to get it done? Um. Mm. That's the that's the magic question. And Nick, their new OC is my guy. Yeah. Um, I love him to death. Uh he's paid his dues. He's waited his time. He's he's gonna be a great addition to their staff. Um I'm, I I hope they figure it out. I'm just unsure about the trigger man. Um I, I just don't know if the trigger man can win the big game that they need him to win. Um, and same thing with Arkansas. I just – Arkansas should be very, very dominant. You have a run-oriented head coach who's an O-line guy. Um, you should be able to dominate the SEC mm-hmm. when it comes to run game. There should not be a team that outrushes Arkansas in the SEC. And I think that's the biggest disappointment for me. Um, uh, another team that's going to disappoint is going to be USC um, and I think a sleeper that that, that could get in in the 12 you're going to call me crazy uh, <laughs> but I haven't seen the trigger man but I know some of the pieces that they got around and the development that the D.C. has done with the defense, Maryland. Okay. 
I like I like I can I look man I can I roll with I I roll with Maryland over Penn State. That's what I will say. I I, I think that Penn State man Penn State I feel and I I hear all of what you saying that 12 13 p you know what I'm saying we going to run run run. I just feel like that stuff runs out and I think the prime example of that was in that Michigan game this past season man like it was a defensive battle but it came down to who scored point? Who scored that that touchdown? And I just feel like uh, to that point that you made, Penn State, they ain't like I don't know who they have coming in at quarterback, but I know the cat that they had last season. He's not a game man. Like he, you know, they just don't have enough tools, in my opinion. Um, I got you. But I, other than that, though, I, I definitely agree with the take on Arkansas. I mean. I didn't much know that too many people was even taking Arkansas serious. And that's no knock. There's no shame to Arkansas. I'm just saying the SEC is kind of loaded this year. Auburn, on the other hand, I definitely feel like uh, they're a team that if they get hot at the right time, I feel like they do have enough weapons that they can make a run and do something special this year. And that's my point. Can they pull it out of if yeah. they can pull it out of those guys and get those guys to believe, they're yeah. often going to be something to reckon with. For if sure. they can't pull it out of them, it's going to be a long season. Yeah, yeah. I think they hurt with the loss of Cadillac, too. I, I do. Yeah, because, I mean, you got to think of having just, you know, guys around, man, that kind of live, breathe, and, you know, bleed that stuff. And yeah. Cadillac was a huge staple, you know what I'm saying, for Auburn football. Right, yeah, right, right. What was going down? So I'll be, I'll be excited to see that adjustment. You know how they do with that. That's something to watch. Right. Now I do want to. <clears throat> Coach Hanley kind of beat me to the punch, but we're gonna, re we, you know, I'm gonna try to pull a little bit more out of him. Uh, Ken, who are your sleepers in college football? Um, sleepers for me, surprisingly, I'm gonna go USC. USC. Uh, yep. I think you know the guy to him is not there no more. You know, we talk about prima donnas usually being you know, <laughs> uh, like that. I think Lincoln Riley gets somebody in there that's dual threat. You know what I'm saying? That's hungry. So um, the surprise is going to be there. And then I'm going to jump out and say Alabama, you know, not being that, you know, there's some bias there. But I just think, again, if you look at the reality of the situation, you know, they, they got that opportunity. They sleeping right now. You know, people still saying, oh, they can't do this without Nick. Well, next year, I think, what, they still top three class, you know, mm -hmm. uh, recruiting class coming in, and that says a lot, you know, with Nick not being there. So I'll probably go USC and uh, Bama, you know, just right off. Okay. All right, Coach Handler, what we got sleeper-wise? You got you got a couple more you got because I know you kind of – um, One team that I'm, that I'm truly, truly um, looking – to compete for a national championship. Yeah. Um, is is Oregon, hands yeah. down. Sure. I'm expecting them to be in the top three. If anything other than being in the top three, it's a straight disappointment. Yeah. Yeah. Um and I'm going to say that Michigan is still going to be relevant. Oh. Okay. I'm going to say that Michigan is still going to be relevant. Okay. And, and don't don't be surprised. Coach Handler said it first. Michigan. Okay. Michigan beats Ohio State. I think I think Ohio State is going to dog walk Michigan this year. That's what I think. They got I, got, I got Michigan by six. By six? Okay. What you say, Ken? I said they got them at Michigan, right? Going to the big house, right? Last year, the game was at Ohio State. It was in the oh. shoe. Okay. Yeah, okay. so, oh, oh, Hanley, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> Corey Sleepers. Uh, all right. <clears throat> now, this is big potential. Big potential, okay? Big potential. Number one sleeper, Houston. Houston. We got a coaching change. We got a uh, we got a uh, Willie Fritz headed to the Cougars, so you know what I'm saying. I feel like he might be able to. Uh, I, I I know he's spoken high regard for that position. He said that was definitely something he's been wanting to do for quite some time. 
So when the opportunity presented itself, you know, he jumped on it. So I definitely think Houston is going to be a team to watch out for in the Big 12. Uh, kind of new to power four, power five football. So I feel like it's a lot of excitement around that move. And I think, you know, I just feel like that program is definitely heading in the right direction. Corey's second sleeper, Washington. I like that coaching change too. I know they lost a lot when DeBoer left, but um, I can't think of the coach name. The coach that was at Arizona, what's his name? Uh, oh, God, yeah, I know, I know you talking yeah, about. Yeah, I'm drawing the blank right now. What's my guy name? Uh, come on, Ken, I know you know. Come on. Uh, offensive cat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of his name. Greens right there. Hello. Oh, there's a cat. There's um as soon as I as soon as I type it in, to him, no. Let's see. I have football. Coach. Damn, I'm drawing a blank, man. Uh Jed Fish. Yep, Jed Fish. Uh I feel like his program in Arizona, for what he had for them to go nine and three last season. You know what I'm saying? I think he coaches football the right way. So I definitely like him going into Washington. I feel like Washington, I'm not I'm not even saying that they're going to be what they was last season. Don't even, you feel me? Don't, don't hold me to that. But I do <laughs> feel like, <laughs> I do feel like they're going to give some teams in the Big Ten run for their money. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is, you know, that's my thoughts on that. Um, another sleeper team, like I already, I already said, these two. Uh, Arizona State and Missouri. I feel like Arizona State. Um, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not very. The Big Twelve don't really, don't really tug at me right now. You know what I'm saying? There's I, I, uh, some teams in the Big Twelve. I think that you should look out for. It's definitely Kansas, right? Lance Leipold and what they, the, some of the games they pulled off last season. Um, let's see what else. I mean, like. So, I mean, it's nobody really in the Big 12 that's like, you know, I have to guess Oklahoma State, you know what I'm saying? Maybe. I know they've been they've been pretty decent in years past. But um that's why that's why I say that's why I say Arizona State though, because it's like it's nobody really in the Big 12 right now. So um there there's a G five team out there that nobody has mentioned. We finna get to that. We finna hold the whole along. We finna, uh, get, we finna get to that. All right, and then Missouri, like I said, Missouri, Missouri. All right, now on that note, Coach Hanley, what group of five school, school or schools do you expect to make it into the CFP? Tulane. Okay. Tulane. Tulane has one of the most explosive running backs in the country. Okay. He's a kid right out of Birmingham, Alabama, and he <laughs> is the truth. He is a grown man. He is to be feared every time he touches the ball. And I'm telling you right now, with, with Craddock calling the offense, and Craddock going to get in that 11-12, he's going to get in some 13 He's going to run some 10. But Craddock is going to stick to that run game, and he's going to take them explosive shots. I am telling you, it is going to be a sight to see. It is going to be a sight to see. And John Summerall just knows how to get the butter from the duck out of young men. Kids gravitate to him. They want to play for him. Hell, when he was recruiting my kids at, at at my previous school where I was the head coach at before, I wanted to play for him. Mm -hmm. And they're listening to his, his, his pitch. I'm telling you, he make you want to do something. Okay. <laughs> Ken, what we got, man? Like, who? Man, I definitely like the two lane pick. Um, and, and I'm going to stay there a little bit and give you another one. Don't okay. be surprised if that kid is gone uh, next season. Watch out for him to go to the bad school. Uh, like Hanley said, hell of a runner. Yeah. Uh, instinctive, powerful. You know, we had the ability to coach against him at Huffman. And, uh, man, just out of this world, you know, speed, you know, and talent, man. And then he got a little brother that's, you know, top in the nation. So uh, something about them, them boys there, man, 
that's just doing that thing. So, you know, baby brother's committed to uh, Ohio right now, Ohio State. Okay. And uh, don't be surprised he finishes this this year with Tulane. And uh, Locke just may pull that Birmingham connection off. So I, I can stick with that Tulane pick. I like that one. Okay. You got just what, back of the year, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. I, I can dig that one as a as a team coming out. Now another one, I think Corey you mentioned was uh, Kansas. Kansas okay. really a uh, sleeper, and uh, I think they got quite a bit, probably quite a good bit returning. So, yeah, yeah if all possible, uh, I look for them to kind of make that climb. You know, being nothing's out there too tough. Yeah, it, that might that might be a good one. Okay. Now I, I definitely on my on my you know group of five expectations. Definitely have Tulane in that mix. Um, <clears throat> James Madison, right? James Madison. You You talking one now. Yeah, you would do. We talking ball tonight. So look, James Madison. Um, I definitely feel like they're they were a team, you know. Uh, what was the ruling on their uh thing? Because they ran into some legality issues uh, this past so, season. Um, I, I think they had one year probationary period. Okay. Um, so I think their probation is over. Okay. So they will be eligible this year, if okay. I'm not mistaken. So I, I feel like that team there, I mean, honestly, I think that was a team that would have gave some Power Five schools some. Over, over North Dakota? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Hey, to be honest, to be honest, I know North Dakota. I know their pedigree. I know their pedigree. So I'll say like that would James be Madison by 21 over North Dakota State. <laughs> okay. Oh, we might have a better 10 piece on that coat. Man. <laughs> okay. My lemon pepper, please. Yeah. <laughs> so check this. So James Madison. Uh, those are my those are my group of five schools: Tulane, James Madison. Uh, as far as schools in the group of five who might just just you know for for our viewers out there, you might want to pay attention to them going into this next season. I would say uh, Middle Tennessee. I definitely like you know their head coaching change with Coach Mason um, and his his I guess revamp into the college football world. It took some time off. So now he's getting back into it, and uh sounds like he's pretty focused. Um, and then also I said Utah, right? Coach Hanley, very familiar with their head coach. Um, and I feel like just – and I'm just solely social media. I feel like Utah is definitely making some moves on some guys, some guys that we know, you know what I'm saying, and some other cats. I think they might be an interesting team. Like, they didn't have a great season last year, you know what I'm saying, but – I feel like, you know, they've they definitely made, you know, some moves out west. So uh, who else y'all got as far as group of five schools that you might want to look for? I, I would agree with Middle Tennessee. I got a chance to go watch them in person. Okay. And um, run game-wise, you notice I keep talking about the run game. <laughs> um, they, they, they can get it done. <clears throat> Uh, they got physical explosive backs, and then they got they got a cat that can go and get it. And the thing is about the cat that can go and get it at receiver, he's not just playing one position. I think he had six or seven catches, and he was lined up in four different spots. Like, yeah. and they still were able to find ways to get him the ball. So yeah. kudos to the OC for being able to design and move him around like that. Yeah. Um, Texas El Paso, um, they are going to be a problem. They're going to be a problem. But I, I, I think there is uh, there, there's another team that I'm expecting to see something from this year, and that's South Florida. Oh, Okay. Okay. South Florida, uh, second year with that system that Tennessee runs, um, a veteran offensive line presence. Yeah. Um, a veteran quarterback. Um, I, I'm expecting for South Florida to to be relevant. 
to be very, very relevant. USA. What we got, Ken? Uh, Florida. 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 I think Florida is finally going to get out of the hump a little bit. Uh, and I'm only saying Florida, man. I got to show my dad some love. He's a uh, big time, big time Gator fan. And I think this year, not as much buzz, you know, kind of centered around what they're doing other than the 30 for 30 that came out. Uh, don't see them, you know, represent too much, but as far as, you know, somebody that could surprise too, I'm, I'm going to go Florida. You, you know, got I'm getting back to the grit, you know, right. what the program was, you know, I truly understand it. If not, Florida State going to overtake it. Right. You got any, you got any group of five schools? Uh, group of five. I'm, I'm still big on the North Dakota State. I mean, yeah. you threw out James Madison. Yeah. And I, I, you look back at the history, you know, the program, very successful, you know, for yeah. what they did. Everybody understands, you know, what their role is, and I think they do it well. You know, so you talk about a team just having everything on each level. Yeah. Uh, year in and year out, they're able to compete. And so we, you know, kind of expanding, you know, some things, man, maybe they get the opportunity. You know, right. Did, know did North Dakota well, make a transition? Did I miss it? They, I thought they, they were still they FCS. Were they still FCS? I was gonna ask. Then they they just played in the championship game against. Um, yeah, they still in the FCS. I thought yeah, they just they, moved. Uh, we have to Google. Does it lie? <laughs> Let's see. Am I early? I know with uh the SEC taking everybody. I know that was one of the conversations. You know. Let's see. Oh no, we we can get our fact check going real quick. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, they still in the FCS. They still uh, in the FCS. Yeah, right, so. they still FCS. Let's but see. they, yeah, I mean, North Dakota State, that's still, they yeah, they have beat up on some some five. I mean, that's what I thought. I thought with everybody kind of jumping SEC, they supposed to pull them in. I thought they were one of the teams. I'm going to go, I'm going to take it to Notre Dame then. I'm going to go, I'm going to go Notre Dame. Um, I ain't going to give you nothing like He's he stuck on them P fives. He don't want to get that. Group of five. He don't want to get FAU. He don't want to go FAU. He don't want to go. Nothing. Yeah, I don't know. He can't, 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 can't do see it. nobody else. Hey. <laughs> hey, it is what it is. It's too lame. It's you know what I'm saying? Lame. That's what I'm saying. I don't see nobody else. <laughs> now, now, but now, look. You heard you heard him first though. I do see Makai. I do see Makai going to Ohio State and Locke pulling out that Birmingham connection. Okay. But, but yeah, I don't I don't see nobody outside of that, man. I can't. I mean, yeah. now now one thing that I got to say now, you know, Summerall went to went to Tulane, but Troy team is still pretty much in. Hey. Yeah, and they got so, and they got some P five coming in. So so Troy Troy is still in tech. So don't be surprised if, if Troy really makes that turnaround. And I'm I'm gonna blow your mind with this one. What this is year four, year five for Bush Jones yeah. at Arch State. Okay. Don't be surprised to see Arch State playing for the Sun Belt Conference. All right, Arkansas. Indeed. We know this. Shout out to my boy yeah. Jay Mitch. I gotta I give him some love. We know that we know the connection. I was gonna say yeah, it got to be a connection. Though. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hey, probably gonna be one of the most physical secondaries you see in the G five. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ain't no punks back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm I'm sticking too late. <laughs> hey, it ain't even nothing really. But that, that, man, that's cool that's cool. I was really I was really hoping for that North Dakota State though. I thought they was actually transitioning over. I'm trying to think who did they play in their um championship though. Let's what thing did they run into? It was a um, they have maroon and gray, a maroon and gray team. Let's see. Yeah, I can't, I can't think, but I do, I do remember watching that game. That was a pretty good game, and I know uh, North Dakota State. They never, they don't disappoint. But <clears throat> just um, I'll say this: I appreciate you guys for coming on the show this evening. Uh, and like I said, this is always refreshing 
to me just to be able to talk ball and kind of switch up the format of the show. So just to show the, you know, the fans of the Modern Sports Show, we got range, we got depth, and we really, you know what I'm saying, we really in the mix. So um, I appreciate Coach Hanley coming on, sharing his his opinion, Coach Coach Ken sharing his perspective, man. We gonna have to get these guys on probably closer summer ball. Some things have changed heading into fall. Bring them back on and get you know their take on on uh, the different movement and stuff. So. You guys be sure to like, comment, subscribe, make college, make the modest sports show home with your college athlete. Keep coming. Hey. Yeah. Big look, 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 bro, little nephew, little nephew. Let me yeah. let me let me say this. Okay. If you want exposure nationally, yeah, you gotta mess with the modest sports show. Okay. Because y'all y'all need to understand. And I'm saying this first. Not because this young man is family, but because he cares about he cares about the individuals that he's interviewing. He's giving them opportunity to expand their platform while expanding his. But we we need to understand that there is something special going on here, and you better get on board while you can, because you probably won't be able to get on the show by the end of the year. <laughs> hey. I appreciate the high regard, man. We grinding. We grinding. We grinding. And just like that, guys, we out. If you made it this far in the episode, I appreciate you. Be sure to like. What was your favorite part of the episode, too? Drop that in the comments. Subscribe. Share the video around. And, of course, stay modest.